Hi everyone, Alexa here. Welcome back to another water filtration review. Today I'm reviewing the Epic Smart Shield Under the Sink Water Filter. I'm gonna tell you about this filter, talk about the pros, the cons, everything you need to know, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up underneath my sink. And then I'm gonna give you my personal review after I've used this product. So this is the Epic Smart Shield Under the Sink Water Filter. It removes more than 70 water contaminants, which is great if you want access to high quality filtered water for drinking and cooking. It's also really affordable. This filter is between $135 to $160, depending on which one you buy. There's a couple different versions. And it removes more than 70 contaminants in the water, which I'll talk about more in a second. So there are two different versions of this water filter. One features a dedicated faucet and the other is for inline use which means you're using it in your existing sink faucet. There's only one stage of filtration. The filter life is 650 gallons, which is about 12 months on average, according to the company Epic. So on an annual basis, you're gonna pay about $115 to replace this filter, but that is without the subscription. So there is a way to save money on annual replacement costs, which I'll talk about more in a second. Now, this is good for tap water, but if you have well water or water with high sediment levels, Epic recommends that you use additional five micron Epic Smart Shield sediment pre-filter to prolong the filtered life of the Smart Shield. Okay, so some of the pros. First of all, it is affordable. I'm mostly comparing this to the clearly filtered under the sink filter because that's the other one that I've used. That one is much more expensive. It does remove a whole lot more contaminants, but this one, does pretty well and it's a lot more affordable. So it's a good option if you're looking for high quality water, but at a pretty affordable price. Also, it's made in the USA and it is NSF tested to remove more than 70 contaminants out of the water. So that means NSF tested, it is not NSF certified, but it is tested. And you can see those results online, but I will share some of those with you here. So it removes water disinfectants like chlorine, 95.5%, chloramine, 95.5%, Lead, 99.3 to 99.4%. Mercury, 96.6 to 6.7%. Pharmaceuticals, pesticides, and other chemicals, more than 95%. 98.9% of BPA, 99% or more of asbestos, cis, bacteria like E. coli, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. 94% of PFOAs and 98% of PFOS. Microplastics, 99.6%. Radiological elements, above 99.9%. All of this is tested by an independent and accredited third-party laboratory against official standards NSF 42, 53, and 401. So a few more pros, the water tastes really good. So if you compare this to your tap water, which I will show you in this video, kind of what it looks like coming out of the sink, tap water versus with a filter. You can definitely tell there's a huge difference. It removes that metallic -y taste. It just makes it taste really light and clean. Another big pro is that healthy minerals like calcium remain in the water, and so it does not remove calcium, which adds to your daily intake of calcium, which is great. It's also made from 100% BPA Triton plastic. It's supposed to be very quick and easy to install, but I haven't installed it yet, so I will let you know after I do that if it was really quick and easy. But I can tell you that you don't need to drill a hole in the countertop or really do any kind of construction you can take this with you if you're a renter. So it's easy to install in one sink and then move it to another sink. So it doesn't become a permanent fixture of your sink by any means. A huge pro is that it is low maintenance. So having to replace this once a year is so much easier than replacing a filter from a pitcher every few months or something. So super low maintenance, there's no cleaning involved. You just put it under your sink and you're good to go. Personally, under the sink filters are my favorite for that exact reason. Also another pro, a lot of pros here, is the filters are 100% recyclable. So you can give this filter back, you can send in three used filters and they will send you a free replacement filter. So that's a pretty good deal and will save you money in the long run. They also offer a satisfaction guarantee. You can return the product and get refunded if you're unhappy with it and a lifetime warranty. That's another big one for me personally. I like to have a lifetime warranty, not just a one year warranty because you know how quickly time flies. So lifetime warranty. Okay, so some of the cons is that, like I said earlier, it is NSF tested, but not certified. Some of the filters on the market are NSF certified. So you have to kind of trust that the company is portraying the results accurately. And we believe that they are, but you can do your own research on that. Another potential con is the flow rate in the sink will be decreased because the water is going through a filter. Now I can tell you this happened with the clearly filtered under the sink filter, which I installed previously, and I'll show you that in a second, but I'm assuming it's gonna happen again with this filter because the water has to go through a filter. So this is only for cold water though. So when you use the cold water, the 
flow rate will be less, but the hot water is still fine. So I'll let you know my opinion um, after I've been washing dishes and using this for a while if it really is that bothersome or if it's not a big deal. Before I begin, I wanted to let you know there's going to be a discount code in the description box below for 20% off this under the sink water filter. So if you're gonna be buying it, make sure you use the link and the code in the description below because you wanna get 20% off. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and set this up. Okay, so I'm under my sink here and I'm gonna show you how to install this under the sink water filter. Now you'll notice I have a under the sink water filter already. This is the clearly filtered filter, which you may have seen me install in one of the previous videos. So I have to first remove this filter, but the process would be the same whether you have a filter or not, because first you have to turn off the cold water valve. So for me, the cold water valve is on the right. So to turn it off, I'm going to rotate this all the way to the right. It's helpful to have a bowl or towel underneath just in case there's any leaks. Now I'm going to run the cold water up above in the sink to make sure that I get all the water out of the pipe. These are the instructions that come with the filter, which is honestly probably too intimidating for a lot of people, at least for me when I saw this, this looked really complicated, but it's actually really not. They just break it down into every single step, including, for example, turn on the cold water and proceed to step two. So don't get too intimidated by this if you're like me and you're installing this by yourself without any plumbing experience. It's actually easier than it looks. They just broke it down super, super simple. You will need a wrench. So I went into my husband's tool box and got a few different ones to find the right size. And as I said before, I currently have a filter in here. So I'm going to do the same process right here to disconnect the hose from my clearly filtered filter to the pipeline so that I can install the new one. And again, you want a bowl here to catch any water that is trapped in the pipe. Okay, so next I'm going to Place the cold water adapter on top of the shutoff valve. And it's really important that the white silicone O-ring is seated inside of the hex nut of the cold water adapter. Sometimes it gets turned sideways and causes low flow issues. So you just wanna make sure you check that. Maybe press it down, make sure that's really nice and tight. Might be hard for you to see when I'm doing it in my kitchen. So I will show you that is the step that we're on right there. And again, once it's secure, you want to use a wrench to tighten it. However, the company says to not over tighten the strip thread too much because that could cause a leak as well. So as you can see in the back there, I've got that installed now. So now we want to use the wrench to connect the lower end of the cold water line to the top of the white cold water supply adapter that you just put in. So for me, that would be the end of this it needs to now connect to the end of that white adapter. Okay, next we're going to install the tubing. So we've got the blue tubing and we have white tubing. You're going to install the blue tubing on top and the white tubing on bottom. You wanna push really hard in the holes and then try to pull them out. And if they come out, then they're not tight enough. Okay, so now we're going to install the filter. So this is what you're gonna use now. The company does give you some screws. You can put this um, into the bottom of your sink and actually fasten it. I'm not gonna do that. There's a Velcro option as well. So I'm gonna use the Velcro option, but you wanna look at the two ears on the side here, ear one and ear two, and find kind of the holes that those go into on the bottom of this, and then secure it. Okay, I'm having trouble with the twisting part. I'm supposed to make it so you can't see the ears at all, and I'm not there yet, and I'm not sure why. Okay, so that helped. Basically, I just brought this on top of the counter, used more weight on the top to twist it clockwise, and it did, in fact, twist. And like it says, you cannot see any of the ear at all, so I think I'm good to go. So you're gonna install the blue tubing on the right and the white tubing on the left. It's the same idea where you just push in. I really like this, actually. It's very easy. And pull out, make sure that it doesn't come out. And you do the same thing on the left. So the next step would be taking this Velcro, if you're going to use Velcro, or you can use the screws to fasten it, you know, wherever you want to fasten it. I'm actually going to skip this for the time being because my toddler just woke up and I need to just get this tested. And actually mine is just fine sitting right here, so I'm going to leave it right there for now. Okay, so upon turning the water back on down here, I did have a small leak and it was where the 
white tube connected in and I just wasn't in enough. So when you go to connect the white and the blue tube, you really have to push with a lot of force. And if they are wiggly and they're not coming out with your hand pulling gently, that's not enough. You wanna make sure that they don't pull even when you kinda yank at it. So it's fixed now and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the sink. So now I'm gonna show you the before and after with the water pressure. So here's what the water pressure looked like before we had any filter below the sink. And here's what it looks like now that we have the filter. And again, that's for cold water only. All right, I'm coming back in this video to give you my personal review of the Epic under the sink water filter now that I've been using it. So I want to say that my review is mostly comparing it to the clearly filtered under the sink filter because that's the one I've used before. So if you want to look at that video, you can check it out in this playlist of water filter reviews. So I'm gonna skip a lot of the parts where I say how great it is to have an under the sink filter in general, assuming that you understand that you do want an under the sink filter because that's the choice you've made. So, so the first pro is that this is an under the sink water filter, which is just amazing if you've never had one to just be able to turn on your sink and have filtered water is so worth it. In my opinion, if you're debating between under the sink versus like a pitcher or something else along those lines, by far under the sink is the way to go. And the reason for this is you can use it for filling up your water, filling up pasta water, washing your hands, feeding it to the plants or the animals, whatever. Also, it doesn't take up any countertop space, which I am really big on. I really don't like anything on my counter because I already have so much stuff for cooking and whatnot, so I don't like to have anything extra. Okay, so aside from the fact that this is an under the sink water filter, which is obviously my favorite kind of filter, the biggest pro about this specific filter is that the water pressure is really good. So I showed you the before and after comparison with regular tap water versus the filtered cold water because you can only use this filter for cold water and it really isn't that much of a reduction, which I was surprised because Epic does say there's going to be a reduction in the pressure and there is a reduction, but the clearly filtered one that I reviewed last time had way more of a reduction. So I can fill my water bottle up in five seconds instead of 10 seconds. Um, I can use it for pasta water. It makes doing dishes easier because with the clearly filtered filter underneath the sink, I have to run the hot water in order to get high water pressure. Whereas this one, I can have it more medium because the cold water is still filtering quite a bit of water. So that's the best pro. I guess the second pro that I would mention that's also really good is of course the price. So this is significantly cheaper than the clearly filtered one that I talked about before. And quite frankly, it's on par with a lot of the really high-end pitchers on the market. So if you're gonna go for a high-end pitcher versus this under the sink filter, I would again, pick this under the sink filter. And just for comparison, because I keep talking about the clearly filtered one, that one is about 500 or so dollars to buy up front and then about 400 or so, give or take. Don't quote me on that, but you can check out the website. Depends on if you are subscribed, but call it $400 a year to replace the filter, depending on how much you use the water. Whereas this one is $135, $150, depending on which one you get. And then the replacement cost is another 115 or so per year, depending on how your water usage. But the point is, is it's, it's significantly cheaper than that filter that I reviewed before. Okay, so my cons, there are two main cons that I have with this water filter. Number one, I didn't like the setup. It does say that setup should be easy and quick. And it was relatively easy, easy enough that I could do it. But as you saw in the video, it took me longer than I expected with a toddler, I have to only get things done in nap time and it is difficult if I can't finish something while she's napping, especially when it comes to water. And so I like things that I can do quickly and this took me a little longer than I thought. The hardware in this filter is not as sophisticated as the clearly filtered one when it comes to setting it up. With that said, it only had a few major pieces, so it is very figure outable, especially if you don't have a toddler next to you needing your attention. <laughs> <laughs> but point being, it was easy to set up. I just prefer the clearly filtered one in terms of the setup. It was easier for me. I did have one small leak, like I, I showed you when I first turned the water on. It had to do with, I think, the blue tube not being far enough in. So I was sweating a little bit, trying to get in there and really use my you know pressure to put it in and just kind of, it just kind of took a little more effort. Okay, so the second con, and I hate to say this, is that the water does not taste as good as the clearly filtered under the sink filter. And I thought it would. I've tried Epic filters before, really liked their pitcher, I had their dispenser, this water, did not taste like the clearly filtered filtered under the sink water. 
I did notice a difference. So when you taste your tap water, at least where we live, it's very heavy, it's kind of metallic-y, I can taste kind of a metal-y flavor in there. And then when I had the clearly filtered filter underneath there, it was just so pure and it just tasted so good. Um, this one is somewhere in the middle. So this one tastes a little heavier. It's definitely better than the tap water, but it is not as good as the clearly filtered one. And I'm actually surprised I'm saying that because I didn't think I would even notice a difference. I thought that it would taste just like the other one. And I, I have to say it's not as good. Okay, so with all of that said, I wanna give this filter a 3.5 out of five. And that is because of the taste and the fact that I struggled a little bit with the setup. I would say though that this is the number two under the sink filter when you compare it to clearly filtered at least in my experience of looking at water filters and tasting the water, it is still good. It still removes a lot of contaminants. It still was relatively easy to set up. It works well. I've had no leaks since then. So I would say it's a good purchase. If your budget is in that one to $200 range, this is going to be a great purchase for you. But I have to be honest on this channel and tell you that I would rather spend a little more on the clearly filtered under the sink filter. I liked it better to set up and I like the taste better. Okay, well that wraps up my video on using this under the sink filter from Epic. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, you can feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to get the discount. If you are going to be purchasing this filter, you can save even more money by using the code below for a nice discount. And please hit that subscribe button for more BOS water filtration content and reviews. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.